Hello everyone, I'm glad to see you all here today. I'm Amin Sbia, Senior Consultant of European Business Management Academy from London. I will be moderating today's session. The topic of the webinar today is Football Digital Transformation. Why technological change are important in sport? Sport technologies unlocking unprecedented opportunities for growth in the sport industry, offering the potential to draw fun closer through innovative and customized experiences. The capitalize of this opportunity, however, digital will need to be ended in very aspect of the business transforming people process and technology. To talk about real experiences, we have a guest from Uruguay, Mr. Rodrigo Avaron, marketing and commercial manager of a big and famous club in Sud America is a na club national of football. The topic of his presentation is nationalized strategy. I would like to remind you that you can ask question or uh, leave your comment in the chat box or raise your hand using a reaction button. Rodrigo, the floor is yours. A million of people. But regarding to football, we have a really great achievement. If you can see in the in the right side of the of the of this slide, we have a comparison between the total amount of professional football players with uh, compared to the total population within the, the countries that already won the FIFA World Cup. And if you see that ratio, Uruguay is, is the country with the, the biggest ratio between professional football players and the total population uh, above Brazil, England, Argentina, France. So that, that is why, why we say that Uruguay is the miracle of football, because uh, among that, we have already won two FIFA World Cup, two Olympic Games, and we are the country that won the, the most the amount of Copa America, that is the, <clears throat> the continental competition here in South America. And within, the, within this country, within the, the miracle of football in Uruguay, Club Nacional de Football is one of the biggest teams that, that, that has the country and has contributed a, a lot for this achievement to, to, the, to Uruguay. So we have a rich heritage. We are a, a club that was founded in 1899. So we have already 121 years and we already won 160 official titles. We are the, the club with the most amount of, of titles in, the, in, in America. And within that, we won three Copa Libertadores and three inter Intercontinental Cups. Also, we are a club that is constantly competing in the South American tournament. In 2016, we were awarded by Comebol because we achieved 20 consecutive participations in Copa Libertadores. That is the most important tournament competition in this continent. Our home, our home is the Gran Parque Central. This is a football monument. It has a lot of history. It's the stadium where the first game of the FIFA World Cup was held between USA and Belgium. And USA won 3-0. So that is why we say that we have a lot of, a lot of history here because of, of that. And because it is the, the oldest stadium in, in America. We have a lot of history a rich heritage, but also we have a, a great future because the 10% the of our academy players reach the national pro squad. In 2019, we won the national league with a 70% of players uh, coming from the academy. And now the actual team, it has 83% of players from the, the academy. The other 20% of players, other 20% of our academy reach the, the, the close first teams, other, other, other close first teams. 
So we have a, a 30% of our academy players that uh, achieve or reach professional soccer. This is a, a good average of, play, of players from the academy to reach the, the professional soccer. If we compare it to other clubs, it is a similar average that it has the La Masia from Football Club Barcelona. And here you can find some of our best talents that came from, from the academy. You must know that the first one, Luis Suarez, is the, the most famous of, of all of that. And now we can, uh, now that we see the, how, what, uh, all the, the background of the club, I want to introduce you the strategic plan of the club. If you see on the, on the left side, the actual situation of, of the business of Club Nacional de Football was based the most on the player transfer. Because we are a small country, we have a, a very powerful academy and South America is an, an export of, of players. What, we, what do we want to do with the new strategic plan and focusing a lot on digital is to depend less on the player transfer and to have, uh, instead of 45% of our incomes coming from the player transfer, going to a 30%. And to achieve that, what we need to do is to increase our commercial side. And to increase our commercial side, we depend a lot on the uh, digital transformation. Why, why I say that? because we made a, a study of the population of Uruguay and the potential of customers that Club Nacional de Football has, has in, in Uruguay. And we achieved that. What we found is that we have a potential customer in Uruguay of 1.2, 1.3 million uh, fans of, Euro, in, of Club Nacional de Football only in our country. It's almost a 40% of the population of our country. And we have a pyramid in where we can classify the different type of funds. We have the, the, the huge fund that goes to the, to the A side of the pyramid. That is like the crazy funds that they all always go to the stadium. They buy the, the shirt. They are always uh, looking for news about <coughs> national. Then there is a, a, another side that is the B that they are not that crazy as we can find the, the other ones. And then the, the place, the, the base of the environment where we have the people that like Club Nacional de Fútbol, but they are not that fun. But they want to, to have a relation uh, within the, the digital uh, things of the club. This is why we focus on a brand definition, a new brand definition of Club Nacional de Fútbol that want to focus on, uh, on digital, on digital transformation. And for this, what we really needed was if we have 1.2 million people that are fan of Club Nacional de Football, we need to know where they are, who they are, and the, what, what, uh, what would be the, the best way to communicate with them. So we can uh, bring it closer to the club and convert them in clients more than funds. So what we needed was to uh, have our own CRM and to have a really powerful database. So for this, we focused on all the things that I presented before, all the importance and all, all the, the history that the, that the club has to engage with our funds. That, that is why we create uh, a new claim, a new brand that the el valor is la diferencia. That it means that the, the, the yeah the value is the is the difference. Be why is, is that? Because what we see, or what we saw is that in the 121 years of history of the clubs, there are a, a, a lot of uh, milestones. But every milestone that we have in our history shares the same value. So there are four or five values that uh, are always 
in all the things that, that we do at the club. So what we say is, if you know the history of the club, if you know the potential that we have for the future, if you know our history, if you share this value, you need to nationalize Nationalizate is, is nationalize, is to be part of uh, our community or be part of this way of understanding the, the football. And why we say that? Because one thing that I don't know if you know, but Nacional has a, a really uh, impact in what nowadays all the fans are doing is the word fan, the word incha, that it means came from Uruguay. This, the, this word was conceived in, in our stadium because we have a, a person that was always uh, on the side of the, of the pitch, cheering and uh, helping, helping the, the, the team on the outside, blowing the balls with, with his lung. And to blow the ball in Spanish, it, is, it means hinchar el balón. So as he was a very exotic guy, everybody asked, who's that guy, who's that guy? And everybody says, this is the hincha balones of Nacional. This is the, the blower, the ball blower of Nacional. So because of that, the, this term of hincha come from this guy that is called Prudencio Reyes. So with this strategy that is called Nacionalizate, what we do is if you share this value, you are a fan of Nacional. And what a better thing that to officialize that you are a fan of football is that Prudencio Reyes, the first fan ever of the history of football, signed you a certified. And I'm going to share a video with this presentation. I'm sorry that the video is in Spanish, but it has English subtitles. This, is, this video we launched in the, the birthday of Prudencio Reyes, that was April 8, 28. And we were in the middle of the pandemic and people uh, couldn't have the possibility to attend to, to the stadium. So what we wanted is that this person, the first fan in the history of football, say something to all the fans to, of football because he understood the, what it was not to go to the stadium because he created the, this way to, to understand football. Sorry that you couldn't you couldn't hear the video. Just let me change that. Sorry. Oh, 
dijo a todos los hinchas del mundo. Porque yo padecí algo similar muchos años atrás. Un mundo sin hinchas es un mundo sin colores. Porque ser hincha es estar presente. Es festejar. Pero también es sufrir. Es darlo todo sin esperar nada a cambio. Porque ser hincha es ser parte de una comunidad. Una comunidad de enamorados de una pasión que seguro muchos no entenderán. Este legado, mi legado, es un vínculo eterno. Well, with, with this video, we launch an, an expectation, an expectation campaign of what we were about to launch a few days after, on the May 14th, that it was the, it is the, the anniversary of Club Nacional de Football, and it was this campaign of Nacionalizate that what we wanted was the people to subscribe in a landing page so we can have the the data of all our fans so we can start to get to know all our fans from Uruguay and outside Uruguay. This is the, the an example of what you receive when you subscribe in the Nacionalizate uh, fan base. You can see that it has the sign of Prudencio Reyes and also uh, his 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 face his face because he is the the first fan of football so he's certifying that you are a, a football fan no matter if you are from nacional or for another team you are a fan of football so you, you should have this this certified this is a little bit of the impact that that we have that we had about the the campaign and some some numbers in the first week, we achieved 60k of nacionalizados, and what we tried to do is to to take to compare it with something or that it was really good for our fans. That was on the sportive side. That in the year 2019, we won the Uruguayan tournament, and we won it, winning. Uh, two finals in four days to our most uh, or our biggest rival that is Peñarol. So there was like a show that two finals in four weeks. So what we tried to, to show our fans that was that in two weeks, we achieved four full stadiums of nacionalizados. That was a way to incentive uh, the people to uh, continue nacionalizando. And the objective of, for 2025 is to achieve the 1 million nacionalizados. So with this, we could have a, a really powerful database of all the people that is really close to the cloud. So we can communicate and we have uh, engaged really great with them. And with this, we started to do small things that, for example, today we are going to do uh, meet and, a virtual meet and greet with one of our first team players that the past month, uh, Sunday achieved the 100 official games with Club Nacional de Football. This is a, a member only invite. Only 20 members of Club Nacional de Football are able to participate, but we are able to do this kind of actions uh, or activities because we started to do this strategy of nacionalizados and to have the, the data of our fans and members. If not, uh, it is not possible to, to, uh, for us to do these kind of things and to engage in, in that way with, with our fans. 
this is an old slide, but we have already more than 180,000 nationalizados all over the world. This is a really powerful impact and really surprise us because we have nationalizados in more than 80 different countries in the world. So we are really happy with this strategy that is the beginning of all what we want to do and is really uh, focus on the digital side of the business of the football industry. Well, with this, it was a, a small presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, happy to happy to answer. And also, please, I invite you to nationalize and to be part of, of this club. Thank you so much uh, for your presentation, uh, Rodrigo. Really, we all enjoyed your presentation. But I have a question for you. I would like uh, to know about your partnership with the um, Legend Agency. Can, uh, can tell us something uh, more about it? Yes, of course. This is what I, what I, what I, as said, is nationalizate. It was the beginning of our strategy, but that beginning was to have the data. But once we have the data, we have to communicate, okay. we have to share our, all our things. And that is the, the crucial part of this. That is why we have this alliance or partnership with Legends. That is one of the uh, most powerful companies in the digital transformation in football. Because we need to have a really powerful website, a really uh, powerful uh, official app to can share and have information from, from our fans and to share the information with them. Ah, great. great. Muchas gracias, Rodrigo. Great, great uh, presentation, really. If any question from Chajip for maybe or uh, something, we can go for another uh, presentation. Was clear. Good, good, good. Just uh, okay. you know, wonderful presentation, and uh, what you are trying to achieve is uh, remarkable. And congratulations to you and your team. Uh, and what I see is that uh, you don't have so far any traction from India out of the whole countries, and even our neighbors, the Nepal, you have some traction. But then, what we need to strategize is how we can uh, connect. Uh, you, your uh, national uh, with India you know, that uh, can be a big big uh, uh, leap for you because we have people and they really follow uh, global football in big way and uh, your uh, stars are uh, role models in India in big way and uh, that is uh, what we can uh, discuss going forward but uh, my compliments to you and I'm sure you will have a more global strategy in terms of digitization. And that's mm -hmm. how you will grow commercially uh, and kind of reduce uh, your dependency on uh, you know, players' uh, transaction because there will be a point when uh, uh, there, that can be lower, but then you can still sustain your operation with big commercial uh, strategy and commercial revenues. Yes, and all the best. Well, thank you very much, Andrea. It, it would be great to, to create a, a bond between Nacional and, and India. It will be really interesting. Thank you, thank you. Looking forward. Great. <laughs> and now we virtually go to India. India has been on a digital first trajectory for a few years spurred on by its goal of becoming a trillion dollar digital economy by 2025. Mr. Shaji Parbakaran, president of uh, Delhi Football Association, will demonstrate the experience of his organization in digital transformation, step by step and everything. Shaji, it's your turn. Uh, thank you, Amin. Uh, just uh, in comparison to what Rodrigo presented, he is on the top of the pyramid in terms of digitization. What uh, I'll be sharing is at the bottom of the uh, bottom 
part because we are just at the process of digitizing in a very basic way which uh, liked uh, which uh, you will see in my presentation just a minute will I'm having some problem. Just a minute. I'm having some problem with the file. Is it okay, uh, Shaji? Yeah, just a minute because I have, you know, said having sharing problem with the Okay, let's see if it works now. Yes, can you see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, just a basic introduction about Football Delhi. Uh, we are uh, the association uh, in the capital city of India. Uh, we, uh, the Delhi, as you all know, Delhi is the Indian capital city. And uh, we have uh, 36 associations, which is affiliated to uh, the All India Football Federation. That is our national body. Uh, we are the provincial body uh, of football and in our structure we have 92 clubs affiliated to us we have a four tier league right now and which will move to a five tier league uh, starting from c to a premier division uh, from next season onwards uh, we uh, you know this uh, association uh, has come to uh, in play since 1926 uh, which is a uh, uh, nearly going to be a century old association in terms of uh, uh, you know the organization's uh, uh, life uh, it's uh, uh, but uh, in terms of uh, what we see is that uh, organization has changed a uh, few times uh, it was earlier known as delhi football uh, association then it has become delhi soccer association and now we have rebranded uh, the Delhi Soccer Association to Football Delhi in 2018, basically to you know, bring more uh, you know, uh, youthfulness in the system, it more uh, of uh, kind of uh, energy into the system. Uh, we thought we need to rebrand, and that's how in 2018 we rebranded uh, the organization, and it is called Football Delhi. And our vision is uh, to be you know, a model football uh, state in India. Uh, though our target was 2021 but uh, we I don't, we haven't uh, you know any close to achieve that because one year we lost in the pandemic and then uh, we have other challenges but i we are very sure that we will be able to meet that target uh, in the coming years and uh, our mission is uh, you know, very clear that we want to empower everyone uh, in uh, delhi uh, we have, you know, as Rodrigo, for your information, we have 25 million population, which is, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, a big number uh, compared to what you have in Uruguay as total. But in terms of football aspect, we are not any close to, you know, what you have. And uh, uh, that's the gap we have. But uh, the plan is to, you know, transform it and become a vibrant football city. And uh, that is the way we are working. And uh, you know, as coming to the topic, uh, which is the digital transformation. And our, you know, we were totally a paper-based, uh, very conservative organization uh, in many ways. Uh, but we have initiated the digital transformation uh, from 2018 because earlier everything was, uh, you know, off. There was nothing online in our system. Uh, from uh, from uh, writing uh, writing an application or correspondence communication 
everything was paper based and old system and we have in a way reached you know where we have uh, most of the uh, aspects we now come to an online platform uh, which is a good uh, change in a big change with that we have to thank all our stakeholders who have proactively uh, you know, taken uh, the initiative forward and they have cooperated and supported that change uh, which is big for us because uh, uh, from a paper based uh, to moving to a digital space which is a good transformation for us uh, that way we are able to manage football better but again uh, in the digital transformation we have long way to go we are at the very basic level of that transaction because even uh, the financial transactions used to happen uh, cash uh, much uh, you know, but now we have more than 90% of our transactions are online uh, which is a big change and we are using all the mediums of online communication and the social media uh, platforms as well to uh, leverage uh, all the platform but we have long way to go to fully optimize uh, all the platforms uh, because certain challenges and the capacity in the system is still low uh, we are trying to develop the capacity uh, that is uh, what i can tell you and our one of the biggest initiative in the digital transformation was to launch fd connect platform which is uh, was something which uh, we were the first association in india to come up with fd connect it's a uh, it's a digital platform and uh, the idea is to bring all the plat all the stakeholders into one platform uh, for better football management and uh, with this was you know, we launched it in 2018 it took an year to complete uh, the complete uh, uh, you know build the platform and uh, we were the first uh, in the country to do it and it took an year and we started with the player registration part and uh, we have now uh, since the start we have added eight different components uh, uh, into it and uh, we also have you know uh, uh, rfid smart card integration system which we will ultimately uh, link with the national federation uh, CRS system going forward. Uh, what basically what the smart card is, uh, which we will uh, we are planning to give to every registered player, coaches, referees, uh, club members, um, and going forward to the fans as well, uh, which would completely take out uh, the physical uh, documentation because they need to show the smart card and uh, the unique ID. As their uh, whole record will be with us and this uh, smart card will be their passport uh, for everything and uh, they need to show this card in a, in a, whether it is competition part whether it is for uh, the uh, the you know uh, taking part in our trials and taking partner benefits also because what we want is going forward uh, we would like to extend partner benefits to all our fans uh, all our players, everyone, so that our partners get a good connect with our stakeholders, and uh, there is a uh, there is a possibility uh, where uh, the brand or the company uh, gains value out of our partnership, and this can be very objectively, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, the in in sponsorship in commercial. Uh, under uh, partnership the problem is sometimes we really don't know what are the going to be ROI for the partners if they invest X dollar what is there going to be written but with this system they will be exactly know whether they are gaining in business wise in the brand uh, value as well and that is what we are you know, coming up with which is uh, it's, it's a unique thing uh, hope Fully, we'll be able to fully exploit it. And we initially found a partner uh, to co brand this card also. And that is Athletic Drive, uh, a sportswear company uh, which has uh, partnered us. And we are co branding the card. And we have a one card, we have a certain value for sponsor. And that is why uh, our plan is to, uh, in two years, to have 50,000 uh, card holders, uh, smart card holders in Delhi. And uh, and the majority of them players, and that's the process we are working. And uh, uh, link, uh, what is uh, how we link uh, with uh, the smart card, uh, the FD Connect? 
you know, whether it is on the scouting side or on the league management side, coach education, internship, uh, academy accreditation, licensing, commercial aspects, all will be linked to this project. And that way, we are completely digitize our whole uh, football management and operations. And that's the plan. And this is uh, done by a company from Spain for us. And they have the company, uh, the branch company in India. And they also work with FC Barcelona uh, fan fan group. And uh, that's how we, uh, we were able to develop this system uh, with their uh, uh, expertise and collaboration. So phase one, uh, we have you know, completely kind of done. And uh, now we are trying to improve uh, the interface uh, because there are still some uh, hiccups in the system. Uh, we are improving and uh, we are moving to a better server uh, with the experiences because once we go fully online, uh, we want to be uh, glitch free in every sense. And that is, and our data uh, protection policy is also uh, the equal to FIFA protect, data protection policy, uh, whereby um, whoever going to register with us, who are going to part of the FD Connect, they will be fully protected in every sense. And the third phase, we would like to link our uh, FD Connect with the National uh, Federation database, and then automatically gets into the FIFA ID. And then the last phase, what we see is you know, complete uh, competition management system uh, to be part of this and that's how we will be able to digitize the operation and management part and a bit of commercial aspect into it uh, but then uh, as rodrigo's plan uh, we will be you know that would be something uh, we would be thinking once we kind of get into a operational phase where we are uh, operating uh, in a way where we have the right structure right system and the right capacity in the system and I'm sure that phase will also come for us. And then uh, we are now uh, also uh, the we were we were the first state association in India to get into a live streaming platform uh, with uh, Mike Huju is again a global organization uh, where uh, we have uh, live streamed um, nearly 200 games and we have a good uh, uh, traction uh, where uh, uh, 800k total views so far and which is a good uh, 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 which points out to a good level uh, that way but then we have to improve uh, a lot further in this and that's how we will be able to engage our local community with football uh, right now there is a lot of disconnect between the local community and our club and we are coming up with a community program uh, which uh, if, if we are successful with that, then we can link them uh, with the, the clubs going forward. And, um, and uh, see, we use uh, the social media platforms, uh, 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 and, but it is still at a very low level of engagement uh, because uh, of our capacity is not that much uh, to kind of push content and get uh, you know, viral. Uh, that is uh, where we are a bit backward uh, right now because we don't have that kind of resources to invest specifically in the social media platforms uh, to communicate uh, with the intensity, with the volume, with the, with the right engagement and uh, using uh, professional people because uh, our staff who are into operations, they are only handling right now. Uh, but maybe moving forward, we use a digital company uh, which can help us uh, with the right uh, kind of uh, you know, strategy uh, and improving the communication part uh, through social media. And uh, we use uh, emails as you know any other organization and uh, uh, WhatsApp, Messenger, and uh, SMS uh, system, uh, which uh, you know, and uh, what we ultimately you know, want to, uh, like we are getting into a partnership with a television company and uh, that way we will have more visibility in terms of the, uh, our uh, games, uh, that we will, if everything goes fine, we will be able to announce by uh, 10th of April, that partnership. And then we also helping the coaches, how they can improve, uh, you know, the use digital platforms for the planning. 
and that we have signed up with a partner which will be announcing for coach uh, there's all session plans can be made online so that we can keep track of coaches progress also and also they uh, we we can help them to improve in their capacity and we also uh, you know, we just launched a campaign called gift a ball uh, with um, we also launched a crowdfunding campaign to support girl child uh, from uh, socially uh, unprivileged uh, background uh, families we want to support many girls because we are very inclusive in our approach and that way we thought uh, gifting a ball would kind of open up uh, doors for them and they can really through football uh, get empowered get encouraged and achieve something great in life and uh, that we launched on 8th on the international women's day and uh, which was a, we got a good support from media and everyone and the local go and, and the government as well and the minister himself launched this project uh, which is a great one for us and we are now in the process of uh, going through the crowdfunding campaign and uh, which uh, is so far is not that successful but whatever you know the people are contributing we, you know that that would be of great help and then we all registration process for coach education and all happens online now and we want to go to a complete erp management system enterprise management system going forward whereby we will be able to communicate connect and manage our football operations better that is the plan and uh, you know, that's all uh, from my end uh, because uh, football uh, in delhi uh, there were 30 years back was uh, very big in terms of uh, fan uh, participation we used to see uh, 15k 20k uh, stadium uh, uh, full uh, for local games but that is not the case right now we are trying to revive that but it will take time uh, we are seeing uh, we are trying to work out how we can energize uh, local community and fans, those who follow uh, global football and national football, how they can connect with local football. That is the challenge we have, but uh, we are trying to come up with certain strategy. That's how we are planning to launch a national uh, competition called Capital Cup, where we would like to bring best of the clubs uh, from India uh, to play in the capital city and uh, also engage the local clubs and try to create a competition which might uh, be attractive for local fans to uh, connect with uh, uh, our football and that's the try we are going to give this year if everything goes fine if pandemic helps us uh, to organize this so that's the work we are working on right now and we also planning a, a, a conclave and a uh, football Expo uh, in October 2021 where we would like to bring the entire uh, football industry into Delhi and also some global companies who are into different services, products and also clubs uh, to showcase what they are doing uh, and uh, how we can learn from all of them and uh, where how the football industry can grow uh, and uh, get uh, and reach to a uh, you know better commercial level because commercially we are very weak uh, because our commercial revenue is still very bottom uh, though we are the one of the fastest growing economies we have good fan base uh, more than 150 million who follow football which is a big uh, number but uh, compared uh, to the commercial revenues we are still very low and that is uh, what we are trying to see how Delhi become an example for other parts of the country uh, to grow commercially because uh, that's how we will be able to support uh, our projects uh, at the uh, at grassroots level, women's uh, part and the youth part because we are uh, not able to do any youth league so far which is uh, which will be surprising for you all many but hopefully that might change this season uh, if everything goes fine and uh, that's a long lot of work need to happen because it's at a very base uh, level of work we are doing right now uh, but the potential is huge and uh, what we are our 
policies, how we, we, how we can collaborate with more and more organization and build our capacity. And uh, that is what uh, the model we are working and that's how we have more than 20 partners with us right now. And we see that number growing because more the partner, more the collaborators we have, uh, uh, better uh, football we will be able to uh, uh, display and uh, build capacity in our system. And uh, thank you uh, uh, for this opportunity for us to bring uh, Football Delhi into this discussion. And, uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to you know, answer and share further details. Thank you. Thank you, Shajib. Really, I appreciate uh, so much your presentation. It was clear and uh, efficient. Thank you. So, thank you. Amin. Uh, I hope if Rodrigo or a participant has some question, for me, it's really clear. Oh, I, I want to congratulate Shajib for the presentation was really great and really clear. So you have a, a great challenge there to engage the, the local people with, with football. And uh, Rodrigo, we... you, uh, you have a question from... Uh... And, and the partnership with Maikusho, I think it, it will be really, it is really interesting to, no, to no, help okay. you to engage with the people. To the level to, to streaming the games and to make the, the people to be more engaged with with football once the, the pandemic allows people to, to go out to the stadium. So I think you are doing a, a great job and what we were saying after it will be great to to try to find some synergies be, between Football Delhi and, and Club Nacional de Football. Yes, uh, thank you, Rodrigo. I'm sure you know, we, we can uh find something where we can uh, see uh, value for each other and uh, hope let's uh, continue this discussion. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rodrigo, you have a question from uh, Mohamed Radwan. Are you here, Mohammed Radwan? Hi, yes. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Rodrigo, how are you? Uh, thank you for your presentation, and uh, it, it's really insightful, and I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you. My question is concerning the KPIs. Um, like, what are the main factors that you sit for uh, the KPIs for engagement? Like, how do you starts the digital transformation for the club, the challenges that you have faced. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's tricky a bit, it's new and uh, yeah. Well, concerning the, the KPIs, uh, directly related to the nationalizado strategy, the KPIs is the, is the amount of of people in our of new people in our database and the uh, correct data of the people that we have in the database and the KPIs we establish with uh, with what we what I show before that we we found that we have already or we 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 must have at least 1.3 million fans of Club Nacional de Football. So we understand that not everybody uh, will be registered in our database because you have uh, very young people or you have old people that don't, don't use internet. But we have to define some uh, objective that is almost the 80% of this amount. That is why in, for 2025, we need or we should have reached the 1 million funds in our database with the correct data of all of them. And, okay, so, so 
I mean, quarterly or annually, you, you're the, like the, the activities you have, you don't have like kind of uh, a calendar or um, like annual activity to reach that number or, I mean, how do you say, okay, well, we, we will do this, this player has 100 appearance, we will have an activity with this player with, to give, to have an engagement uh, activity with the fans, which could increase uh, the, 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 the data or increase the engagement to a specific number. Uh, how do you assign or, um, or decide to have uh, a certain number of activities per year? We have two different strategies. One is online strategy uh, okay. through our social media that we are uh, every month doing something related to Nacionalizade to push people to go to our landing to Nacionalizarse. We have some uh, paid uh, posts for that to, to have more engagement with, with new funds. And then we have some offline uh, activities related with uh, when the, the club goes outside uh, the capital city just to, to engage people that are not that used to use uh, social networks or internet, just to yes. tell them, hey, you have to nationalize that so we can be able to be closer to you. And also what we do, what we are starting to do is to create some benefits for all the, all the nacionalizados. If you are nacionalizado, you are going to be able to participate in, another, in the next meet and greet with a professional football player. And these kind of things that help us to push the nacionalizarse and to increase the engagement within our social network and with this increase of, this, uh, of the social network, trying to reach new funds that we weren't allowed to, to reach them. Great, okay. Thank you, Rodrigo, for, for answering my question. Thank you for the insightful uh, presentation. Happy, happy, happy to answer it, Mohamed. Thank you. Thank you, Mohamed. And uh, great presentation also for uh, this question. Really was a very uh, interesting uh, question. I learned so much today, really, <laughs> with you. <clears throat> so if uh, more question, if something, more info, I have just some uh, what I I think about the digital transformation. Embarking of uh, the digital transformation journey requires a deep understanding of current capabilities, as well as a vision for the future. That will determine how capabilities, processes, organizational structure, and technology will need to change as sport organizations become comfortable with life as digital enterprise, they will not only draw closer to their fans, but may also find it easier to create innovative and customized experiences that will both broaden and strengthen their customer, customer bases. Thank you so much for Rodrigo Yavaron from Uruguay and Shajib Parbakaran from India. Thank you so much, and I, yeah. I really, really learned so much with you. And I hope not uh, the first and last uh, meeting together, because we have to, to share our experiences and uh, with you, with your uh, project. So we are really, really happy. Uh, in name of uh, European Business Management Academy, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. It was uh, great uh, to be part of your program today. Thank you and pleasure meeting you, Rodrigo and Amin. Thank you. Thank you, Sajib. Thank you. Thank you, Amin, for the invitation and Shashiv. Great to be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.